Last week, uh, now Secretary of Defense uh, Mattis agreed and made the comment that the greatest threat to national security is our own federal debt. Mr. Wood, do you agree with that? From a non-military standpoint, yes, I do. I mean, to the extent that the nation is uh, ever more in debt, $20 trillion, it lessens your ability to spend on defense. Thank you. But, but debt does not bomb cities, so it depends on how you define it. Right. Uh, Dr. Korb, I agree that, uh, and there have been studies that we can certainly procure better and smarter. Um, the federal government doesn't even have a capital budget, and so it's very difficult to plan for a multi-year acquisition. So, and I totally agree that the Department of Defense, I think I agree with our chairman, uh, Department of Defense does need uh, an audit. I and mean, that's just, um, I think it would help us see a lot of things and actually <coughs> become more efficient in our procurement. But I want to focus on a couple of things that we've talked about today. You know, we're, we're talking about the needs in the military without talking about the missions and the mission requirements from a bottom-up standpoint. And the last time anyone really did that was uh, Bob Gates in 2011. And he made an estimate uh, for a five-year estimate, and for FY16, his estimate was some roughly $100 billion more in current dollars greater than what even the president was asking for uh, for this year. At the very time when I would argue that we're facing <coughs> threats, and I agree with my colleague from Massachusetts, that we are facing various different threats, but they're additive. They're not replacement threats. So we have a five plus one mission today versus a one plus one mission through most of my lifetime through nuclear deterrent. So when you look at Russia, China being symmetric threats, you have asymmetric threats in ISIS and all the terrorist activities. Then you have the rogue nations of North Korea and Iran with a nuclear threat. Cyber we're beginning to talk about. We're not even beginning to talk about the, the arms race in space yet. So I would argue that at a very time when our threats are additive, we're talking about reducing to the point where today we have the smallest army since World War II, the smallest navy since World War I, and, and frankly the oldest and smallest air force ever. I don't know what that size should be, but there are experts if we would do it from the bottom up. Based on missions, we would, we would get there. I just have a simple question very quickly. Um, Mr. Wood, do you agree that the Budget Control Act today is an inhibiting factor that's arbitrary in the terms of, of, of what we're doing, in terms of evaluating what we need to spend, um, in light of the fact that we do need an audit, we do need better procurement practices, and a more efficient way to actually run Department of Defense? But do you agree the BCA is, is uh, now should be repealed? I do, and without reservation. Mr. Mankin? I do, Senator. Dr. Korb? I don't think any arbitrary ceiling should be there. However, I think that roughly $620 billion for FY17 was more than adequate to deal with the threats that we currently face. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wood, at current levels of operational ten uh, tempo, the, the concern I have is deployments are getting longer, Families are being broken up. Uh, the number is certainly um, questionable in terms of how many troops we actually need in a voluntary military. I'm very concerned about the increased deployments and our inability, and I can tell you from trips around the world where we are not able to fulfill the missions today because either we don't have the equipment. You both talk about balance of manpower and equipment, and I certainly agree with that, but I'm concerned today about the shortage of certain pieces of equipment in certain theaters that keep us from meeting certain mission requirements today. They're very real, um, and they're not yesterday's war. They're the current issue. We saw in Benghazi. That's not a state-on-state -state war, but we had men die there. And, and so I'm very concerned that we continue to look at the operational tempo. Do you believe that we can maintain this current tempo at the current size without really looking at the mission requirements going forward? No, I do not. Uh, there is a huge imbalance that you just uh, so uh, well described. We're currently in a death spiral where you have lack of money to repair things and send it back. That means you have fewer end items. Fewer end items means that the, that the things that are in the forest are then used more and so you consume the life of that end item, whether it's a ship or a plane or a tank, that much more rapidly. And so it just feeds on itself. And unless we get BCA relief by, by uh, uh, getting rid of that and expanding the force, we currently have two-thirds the force that we need based on 70 years of experience. And uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this uh, death spiral. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm out of time, but I, uh, I fully support this effort to look at this from all angles. Um, I'm very concerned that over the last 30 years, our history has been that we, in the 70s, we um, disinvested in our military. In the 80s, we recapped it. In the 90s, we disinvested. In 2000, we recapped it. 
And now, after 15 years of war, we need to th think about how to replace and recap our military at a very point in time when we have $20 trillion of debt and we have our Social Security, Medicare, and mandatory expenses over the next 20 years running away from us. This is a time, Mr. Chairman, we have got to get serious about how we look at our debt crisis and how we look at our allocation of limited resources across the entire federal government and actually be smarter. And I, I certainly applaud the day's hearing. I hope we have many more. Thank you. Senator Gillibrand.